we have from chapter seven, three different types of acceleration. I've written them all on the board. Please, Christine, just tell me the names of the three different types of acceleration. Angular acceleration, angular acceleration, angular acceleration, alpha or fishy thing, tangential acceleration, and centripetal acceleration. I've drawn the equations on the board for each of them. And I often get asked, what is the difference between these three different types of acceleration? So we're gonna talk about all the differences and what separates one acceleration from another. The first one has to do with their dimensions. Ian, please give me the dimensions of all three. First off is angular acceleration. George, help him out. Meters per second squared. It's also not in meters per second squared. Dono. Radius per second squared. Angular acceleration is in radians per second squared because it is an angular acceleration, therefore it's in terms of angular dimensions. Tangential acceleration, what are the dimensions for that? Pull in. Meters per second squared. Tangential acceleration, on the other hand, is a linear acceleration. It's in terms of meters per second squared. Centripetal acceleration, Julia. It is also in meters per second squared. So notice it's easy to tell the difference between angular acceleration and the other two because angular acceleration is in radians per second squared, which is the angular dimension, as opposed to the other, which are both in linear dimensions. So now we need to highlight the differences between tangential acceleration and centripetal acceleration. Class, what does the word centripetal mean? Center seeking. That means that the centripetal acceleration is always inward. The direction of the centripetal acceleration, the center-seeking acceleration, is that it's always inward towards the center of the circle. In other words, if we have a stopper on a string that is moving in a circle that looks like this, at the moment I've drawn on the board, please class point in the direction of the centripetal acceleration acting on the stopper on the string. Right now, it is acting down, which is also inward. So the centripetal acceleration is this way. That's the direction of centripetal acceleration. Notice, the tangential acceleration is not in this direction. What are options for, what's at least one option for the direction of the tangential acceleration in the location that the stopper is right now? Direction of the tangential acceleration, what could it be where it is right now? Um, Andrea? Or it could be going to the left? To the left is one option. The tangential acceleration could be to the left. What's another option, Andrea? To the right. To the right. Notice it's a tangential acceleration, so it's always tangent to the circle. We don't know whether it's to the left or to the right because we haven't identified first off which direction it's moving and whether it's speeding up or slowing down. It's kind of irrelevant at this point. It could be to the left or to the right. Notice that the centripetal acceleration and the tangential acceleration are always normal to one another. They are always perpendicular to one another. If instead I had drawn the stopper on the string over here, the centripetal acceleration would have been inward and the tangential acceleration would have been upward. Again, they are both at 90 degrees to one another. So a major difference between tangential acceleration and centripetal acceleration is the direction. The tangential acceleration is, like it says, tangent to the circle. Centripetal acceleration, like it says, is inward. Now, when you have circular, can you have, let me make sure I get this right, can you have circular motion without centripetal acceleration? Can you have circular motion without centripetal acceleration? Stuart. Uh, what's, what's the it that's always changing direction? The, the, the tangential acceleration is always changing direction, true, but that's not what leads to having a centripetal acceleration. What is it that leads to having a centripetal acceleration? What changes direction that causes us to have a centripetal acceleration? Your uh, tangential velocity. The tangential velocity, right? So notice, because the tangential velocity is changing direction, it has a constant magnitude, but because the tangential velocity is changing direction, we have a centripetal acceleration. Remember, the centripetal acceleration is what causes circular motion. So, if the object is moving in a circle, you 
you must have, or it must have, I suppose I should put it, it must have a centripetal acceleration. Can an object be moving in a circle and not have tangential acceleration? Aaron? Yes. How? It's moving at a constant velocity. Constant what velocity? Tangent. No, the tangential velocity is changing. Or, um, angular. At a constant angular velocity. If the angular velocity is constant, this means that the angular acceleration, which is equal to the change in angular velocity over change in time, is equal to zero. It also means that the tangential acceleration, which is equal to the radius times the angular acceleration, is also equal to zero. So notice, if something is moving in a circle, you must have centripetal acceleration. You don't necessarily have to have tangential acceleration or angular acceleration, because if the angular velocity is constant, then the angular acceleration and the tangential acceleration are both This highlights a lot of the differences between centripetal acceleration, tangential acceleration, and angular acceleration. Questions on that before we move on to the numbers for today? George? What exactly is tangential uh, acceleration? Tangential acceleration essentially is just how the tangential velocity is changing. It's related to r times alpha, because that's how you can figure it out. But tangential acceleration is essentially, is the tangential velocity increasing or decreasing? That's what it is. 